Good Saturday morning to everybody. This is uh, January 7th, uh, a cold day in Chicago. Uh, it's supposed to warm up to like 16, but I think it's I think it's still pretty close to zero right now outside. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to do a quick little overview on uh, the problems that when I uh, uh, cut apart the wings uh, to get the diagonals out, um, just so I, I know what I'm going to have to work with to get everything straight again. And there is a huge mess with the wings. So let me just go ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of get you, I'll, I'll, I'll get you up to date on what I found so far and I'm sure that there's going to be a lot more uh, problems than, than what I'm looking at right now. Um, uh, first, let me bring you down. I've got uh, both wings. Uh, they're, they're stacked on top of each other. Um, I just want to give you an idea of, of what the major problems that I'm finding right now um, that are going to have to be addressed because they're, they're actually serious problems. Um, and uh, I mean the plane would fly with the problems but to me they're serious problems um, because it wouldn't make me happy. All right, so anyway, let me go ahead. And I'll show you what I'm working with. If we look at the bottom wing, let me get some of my stuff out of the way. If we look at the bottom wing, it's it's straight, it's level going across. And then we drop up to jump up to the top wing. You see the droop it it at the outboard and the the far side of the wing. And where this is where I think that problem comes from. I ended up having to come in because this this part of the actual uh, uh, top, the, the surface, um, is actually was broken at one point in time, and this piece of wood is cracked. Um, so I may end up at this point just removing this whole piece. If I don't do that, um, I'm probably just going to remove this whole piece. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've, I've got the ball set to do it. So I'll, it'll probably be in my best interest to do it. You can see where there was uh, crash damage repaired. And I think this is where the problem for this getting pushed down is. I think it's in the actual replacement pieces that were put in. Um, as you can see, uh, the problems we've got here, which which I'll, I'll come back and still, because there's problems with the bottom wing too. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in I'm actually going to cut the sheeting cover because uh, down here on the bottom, down on the bottom, yeah, the lighting good enough. You can see where there was another piece that was broken. Um, so it, it, the rest of it from this point towards the actual root rib is fine. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I'm going to cut this piece off too on the inside, the lower piece off. And then I'm going to actually remove these pieces uh, because it's it, it's they'll all be the same the little the little half ribs quarter ribs whatever you want to call them. If I can get in once I remove this, if I can get a good uh, a copy of on an actual, I'll, I'll see what's in here because it's either going to be a full rib or or like a quarter rib, um, whichever one I can get a really good copy on, um, I'll either remove it. To actually make a to make a template, um, which will probably be the best bet, or I'll come in with um, and I hate to say this, I've done it before. It when you have to do it in a tight area, you come in with little pieces of cardboard, and you'll fit and trim the cardboard to fit in spot, but you'll use what's already attached as a template, and then you can remove that whole piece uh, of of cardboard that was taped and or glued together. Um, with the outside lines drawn on it and then I can actually go ahead and then cut that out set that inside and if it looks good that'll be the template uh, then I can just go ahead and trace around the outside and uh, run over to the old bandsaw and just uh, start cutting pieces so that first and foremost that's something that uh, that I'm going to need to uh, I'm going to need to work on because I think what it is is they made these pieces wrong and when he actually cam them into place to glue 
I literally think it just pushed this down, the actual leading edge, because you can see there's no attachment point for the leading edge out to the uh, out to the wingtip rib. So um, it would be very easy to push this down. So that I think um, is a problem because you can see right here. Let's see if we can get a good view of that. You can see where the actual um, that's probably that's probably not even maybe an eighth inch light ply possibly not even eighth inch light ply I'd have to measure that's probably sixteenth inch light ply actually came through on the original plane and let's see if you can see it um, this may have been one of the original quarter uh, ribs but you can see where it attached into it and that was what actually gave structure to this part of the wing tip um, I'm gonna have to address how I want to fix that one I'm gonna have to think about that one for a little bit um, you know do I want to actually bring this back through or I'm gonna have to think about that one because this uh, you know I, I don't particularly like this I and mean, if I really wanted to I can come in on the bottom of this because it's gonna have actual shear web uh, glued into place here because I had to cut the shear web out um, so I may end up just uh, bringing a piece if I wanted to just go ahead and and cut a block of like quarter inch um, balsa and just glue it in, in between the spars here and that will actually give me a firm attachment point uh, for the wing tip but uh, all right, that's one of the problems. I've gone through, started doing a little, a, a little bit of repair with gluing things back together again. You can see where what originally happened was there was there was some kind of damage, and I don't know what would have caused the damage this far in. Uh, but this rib itself was actually broken, cut into, broken not reattached so what he did is he actually glued in a piece of scrap on this side so um, so I'm not a hundred percent sure how I want to handle that one um, yeah that's gonna be a good one because I, I I'd like to replace I'd like to actually just go ahead and cut and replace the rib but for me to do this, just this rib, um, because the, here, the, this is the bay that the actual uh, uh, servo sits into. That's going to go back to actually to operate the uh, uh, aileron. Um, what I'm going to need to do is uh, is, is pretty much just kind of come in and figure out how I'd like to. Uh, how I'd like to work with this because if I wanted to I could probably come in cut this down and leave the bottom of the rib the way it is and just make a template off the top of this cut a piece out lay it down and then just sand it so that it's even on the top with the other one so I haven't figured that one out yet either um, like I said there's a lot of problems and I don't know if we're gonna I'm gonna try to show you something here and this is what I came to with the actual downward curvature of the tip of the wing is that I don't know how well this is going to show on the camera let's see if I can do it alright what I've actually got is a laser level set up you can kind of see I'm just flexing it up and down just so you can see the actual laser hit the uh, hit the top so this is on the secondary strut this is a strut the spar the rear spar so we're actually touching here its tip and this piece is going to have to be glued back together again I might I'll probably glue it and then run some uh, cross drill it run maybe three um, uh, eighth inch uh, bamboo skewers what I normally use to oops what I normally use to to, uh, to stir my epoxy they're uh, little bamboo skewers I said that right. You can actually pick these up at most food stores. It's you know they're little. It's it's for making snacks. Um, so what I can do is I can actually go ahead and cross drill, and then uh, just run this through. There is a piece of 
there is a piece of balsa underneath it and that's probably the reason why it's cracked because you're actually running a mounting screw through spruce into a piece, through a piece of balsa so if you're cranking this thing down that was actually allowing the actual uh, screw head to actually go down in between and split so um, so that'll be uh, that'll be addressed that one is not that big of a deal that one to me is an easy fix because I want to leave the spruce in just to keep the structure so if I got to if I've got to repair this and then excuse me cut the piece a quarter uh, quarter inch um, uh, balsa out I can go ahead and replace that with either a, another piece of spruce because uh, I do have still have some uh, some pieces of the spruce that were actually removed from the fuselage that I had to replace. So I can find a piece of spruce or I do have some uh, uh, some basswood uh, which might even be just easier to work with. Just cut a piece of basswood, slide it in, epoxy it and then I'll be able to redrill the hole. But, I mean the holes themselves, I'm not going to use those holes again. Um, I was possibly thinking because I'm going to replace when you see how badly all of these uh, some of these are, are just uh, I don't know if it's going to be worth trying to fix these root ribs or just get a piece of uh, I've got some eighth inch light ply just like tee it just kind of bring it in so I'm going to try a test piece first because if I can get it straight enough um, to get rid of that that waiver and um, I'll uh, I'll just go ahead and do that so I'm gonna do a test piece on it first all right so let's get back to this again because I like to digress I do that well all right so once again here we are where you can see us touching here and as we're coming down there's little spots you can see if I get close to it, I can actually just bump the very top just before my finger. So my finger's touching the top of the actual spar right now. So you can see that it's right on top. Now we've actually got it where it's grazing across the top there. So that's kind of showing a little bit of maybe a high spot, but it's so minuscule you wouldn't worry about it. Now I'm going to try to do this with my finger again and see if you can see. Nothing, 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 nothing. Now you should start seeing. It's not even, it's, 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 it's so darn low, I don't even think I can get it to, well, you can kind of see my fingertip getting red. Alright, so it, it, it has not, it has not bent, it is level, all the way out to here where it starts dropping. So, I'm not concerned about the actual uh, rear spar on the wing, it's the front one. So that's where I think that the wing itself was not built improperly. I think it was all from the actual repair uh, of the wingtip. So now here's the other here's the other strange little issue I've got. If we actually line up the spars on both sides, and then we get them so that the actual root rib is even all the way across. Sorry, let me, let me grab one of my little levels here. So as we can see, if you've got good light, all right, the actual the actual root ribs are parallel with each other on the top. Now we look down the fuselage, and we can see here everything's even. And then as we come up, the top wing is actually angled back at the wingtip. And that's a problem because uh, I'll, I'll put some videos in with the, uh, uh, excuse me, I'll put some pictures in with the videos just showing you the measurements. This is where, uh, you know, if I actually had more hair to pull out, I would. All right, if we see the top one, 5 sixteenths of an inch, the bottom one, 1 eighth of an inch. What, what I did was I actually, you'll see in the pictures, I actually squared off the actual spars the actual 
so I, I had everything lined up on the on the countertop and I actually had these things set up so they were right at the edge of the countertop straight line going down then I measured the actual angle on this the bottom was within an eighth of an inch off it was actually probably it was it was it was it was more I wrote eighth of an inch on there because I just wrote it down quick see it says eighth inch it, it was it was probably it was probably closer to three thirty seconds uh, to a sixteenth of an inch um, but um, anyway regardless the the top wing was five sixteenths of an inch off and that's what that translates into is that difference in, in deflection that's actually uh, that you're going to get um, with the root rib itself it, it not not being not being <laughs> with the root rib itself not being I don't want to call it properly placed but what they actually did was when they it, in, instead of why don't you look at me for a while because right now I'm a heck of a lot prettier than that wing um, what they did is it, it's, instead of actually making let me back this up whenever I actually build a wing and, and I don't care how big the wing is whether it's you know whether it's whether it's a little teeny foamy or you know a quarter scale whatever I, I actually set up an, an actual wing building jig on my bench and what that comes out to be is you're actually going to have um, it's I normally set it up on, on my building boards but what you're actually going to um, what you're actually going to do let me let me set you up on a tripod and I'm going to I'm going to take the wings move them down real quick because this is going to be something that, that everybody needs to know uh, because today I am going to do some repair on this wing um, but I still got a lot of tear down I want to do on it before I start any kind of repairs because I want to find out what I'm going to be able to fix before I start doing repairs because uh, you saw the mess that I had with the tail of the airplane um, I don't want to have to go through that again where I get something glued together but you know I didn't dig in deep enough to really see uh, the problems so that whole you know four videos you're seeing that you saw on the actual tail um, that was that was you know weekend and a half of, of of work and probably out of that weekend and a half of work there was probably about six hours of me sitting around going how do, how do how do I how do I approach this that was there was a lot more thinking involved in that one than just jumping on in and seeing if something would work I actually had to kind of uh, run through uh, the actual uh, problems that I saw and if I repaired it a certain way was this going to happen so it just became you know hours and hours of what ifs which uh, um, which is probably the best way to fix a problem is to it, you know unless unless you're some kind of you know unbelievable time crunch sit down and think about it and, and if something starts rattling your brain and you start getting kind of worked up just walk away for a little bit just go you know go, go just take a half hour off take a mental break you have to do something just to get away from it and then come back in so anyway let me get you set up on the uh on the tripod and then i'll show you how i would normally set this up because when it comes time for me to do the repairs i'm going to actually be running these wings in a jig just so everything is propped just so i make sure that i'm not re-gluing any twist or anything back into it again so all right uh we'll be right back <laughs> 